So I wanted to quickly talk about this question from exercise 1D, which is question two. And I just took this from Solution Bank because Shahan said, oh, well, hang on a second, I got some non-integer values for A and B, which obviously isn't a problem because they asked for constants. But I just thought I'd quickly show you that if A was a half and we wanted it to be written like this, you could start off by writing a half over 4 plus x, and then you've got minus 3 over 2 over 2 minus x. You could start off by writing it like that, and that's perfectly fine as well. But the way they've done it down here is they've thought about like multiplying the top and bottom by 2. So they ended up with 1 over 2, 4 plus x, to get rid of the fraction here. And they multiplied the top and bottom by 2 here, so they got minus 3 over 2 minus x. So if you do get a fraction, you can just put the numerator at the top and the denominator at the bottom. But in some cases, when we get to integration, believe it or not, that's actually going to be more useful when we do integration. So it's good to know how to be able to go between both of them. This is going to be useful for the future as well. Okay. Um, no, so that is okay because we're, we're just saying that b is equal to the b is minus 3 over 2 from that bit. They're, they're always going to say, well, they're not always going to say, they will usually say like the a plus b, but know that you can get negatives, you can get fractions. Uh, it's pretty much just going to be negatives and fractions as anything weird. Okay, so there's some other kinds of ones that we're going to try and get done. We'll easily get this done actually before the end of this lesson. Now and you'll do some practice on it for me as well. And this time it is partial fractions, but for repeated linear factors. So on the denominator, you may have a linear factor like this, which is x plus 1 squared. And that's a repeated one. Do you remember when we would use like the language repeated root when you would be doing graphs and transformations in year one? When you would have that, that would be where it would just touch in the axis. So it's the same idea. We call this a repeated linear factor of the denominator. And if we wanted to try and express 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 squared in partial fractions, if I did it as a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 1, what's the problem with that? The denominators are, I kind of heard a few people saying it. Were you saying the denominators are, Arif, what were you saying? The denominators don't cancel out, no. What do you think over there, boys? Pardon? It won't be squared. Yeah, it won't be squared. Okay, because actually, if you had two denominators that were the same, then you would just add the fractions together, right? So this is saying that 2 over, sorry, 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 squared is just a plus b over x plus 1. But because a and b are constants, it's never, these two things are never going to be equal to each other. So it doesn't work when you have a repeated linear factor. But what does work is if you do this. If you say that 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 squared, if we split it into an a over x plus 1 and a b over x plus 1 squared, that will work. And if it was cubed, because in further maths we will do it going up to cubed, you would have to have 1 for x plus 1, x plus 1 squared, and x plus 1 cubed. Okay? This works if you were going to multiply all these things together. This one would be in, if you did the cross, multi not, not cross multiplication, would it be? If I made them have the same denominator, I would have to multiply this one, top and bottom, by x plus 1. So I would have a x plus 1 plus b all over x plus 1 squared. And now I've got the correct denominator, and my numerator looks like I would be able to match these kinds of things up by playing around with the values of a and b. So this is the only twist, the only difference that we're going to come across in this topic is if there's a repeated linear factor, we have to do both the linear version of it and the quadratic version of it, and then it will all just work out from there. So I've written that down here in this orange box. The problem is resolved by having the factor both squared and non-squared. And I also mentioned if it was cubed, you would have non-cubed, non squared, and cubed. You would have all three versions of it if it did come to that. And this is going to be a great example where I'm going to show you doing a mixture of method one and method two. So please don't write down, oh, method one and then method two. We're going to do a blended version for this, and you're going to tell, well, you're going to see why it's going to be a blended version rather than just picking one of the two versions. So I'm going to start off by saying that 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 
over x plus 1 squared 2x plus 1 is equal to, what should my three things be? Taylor, do you think you could tell me what, if I've got my a, b, and c, what the denominators should be? x plus 1. Good. Good. So we've got them like this. You just have to be really careful now about coming up with the correct, um, coming up with the correct denominator for all of them. No, no. It just means if you did it one way and like Tamin did it the other way, your values, your values of a wouldn't correspond to the same thing. So yeah, if you put this one as squared and this one not as squared, it just might be different to someone else in the class, but it will still come out as the same numbers in the end. So that's 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 is equal to, right, well, what would I need to multiply the a by to come up with the correct denominator? Not x plus 1 squared, no, just x plus 1, because it's already got an x plus 1 in the denominator, so it needs an extra x plus 1 and a 2x plus 1. What does the b need? Just the 2x plus 1. What does the c need? x plus 1 squared. Do you see, like, we're trying to, like, complete what the denominator should look like for each of those? And I've saved a bit of time. I haven't written the denominator for both of these sides here, but if that helps you to see what there is missing, then you should write the denominators in to find out what the missing pieces are that you've got, okay? So, any suggestions of what do you think a sensible thing to do is? And there are a lot of sensible starting points here, so I'm not going to shout you down if you do something that's not what, how I would do here. Any, any things we could do that would be a good starting point as a... You could do x equals minus a half. Okay, I think that's a really, really good starting point. If we say that x equals minus a half, that's going to deal with r eliminating which parts? Ibtiaz, which parts will go if we do x is minus a half? You'll be left with just c. Okay, everything else is going to disappear. Now, on my calculator, the way I do that substitution really quickly is I type into my calculator minus a half and press equals so that it's stored as my answer, and then I just use the answer button. Does anyone ever, ever do that? So I would just type into my calculator minus a half, and then for the left-hand side, I'm just going to type 11 answer squared plus 14 answer plus 5. So I get 3 quarters. This is going to disappear. This is going to disappear. So I've just got 1 minus a half squared. And 1 minus a half is a half. And a half squared is a quarter. So I've got 3 quarters equals a quarter C, which means that C equals 3. OK? So I think substitution was definitely the best suggested starting point there. Good. What should I do next? I could compare coefficients, or I still think there's something that's a, an efficient thing to do before we compare the coefficients. I still think there's a good substitution to do. Let's x equals minus 1. So again, I'm going to press on my calculator. I'm going to press minus 1 equals, so it's stored in my calculator. 11 answer squared plus 14 answer plus 5. That's me being lazy. I could have done that in my head. So 2 equals. Which one's going to disappear? A is going to disappear. C is going to disappear, so I just get B in this case. So that's going to be minus B, I think. Minus 2 plus 1, minus 1. Yeah, 2 equals minus B, which means that B is equal to minus 2. Now, let's say I wanted to stick with my traditional method of doing the substitution. What's the problem at this point? So I could, I could, like I said on that previous thing that we did, or the one that was your turn, I could now just pick a random value for it. Um, but the problem I was trying to say is, in the, you know, the previous ones we've done, there were three values you could pick that would just give you the answer straight away. In this case, because of the fact that we've got the repeated root, I can't pick three different values. So I am just going to pick a sensible value, and I will use this information to help me to do it. So I'm now just going to say probably x equals 0, because I think that's a really easy substitution to do. That will just give me 5 equals, just be really careful. So that would be 1 times 1 times a. That's just a. And then I've got 1 times b. And then I've got 1 squared times c. So it's just a plus b plus c. But I know what b and c are, so I can find out what a is. 
So that means I'm going to say, I'm going to say a minus 2 plus 3. So a is equal to 4. So this time we did a substitution that kind of didn't, wasn't a good value to pick. It didn't make anything disappear. But we did it after we'd already found out what b and c were. So this was one of the things that we chose to do. There was an, alter an alternative pathway we could have picked at this stage. Instead of substituting in x equals 0, we could have compared the coefficients. And I wouldn't recommend comparing the x coefficients, because you've got to think about all of the expanding. x squared is an easy one to compare. Or even easier, in this case, is probably the constant. So if I was going to compare the x squared, I would have had two. I would have had 11 on the left-hand side. I would have had 2a, no b's at all, and 1c. So that would have been 11 equals 2a plus 3. 8 equals 2a, so a equals 4. That was comparing x squared. That was another alternative thing we could have done. And the other thing I said that would have been a good idea is to compare the constants. The constant on the left-hand side is 5. The constant from here would have just been 1 times a, 1 times b, and 1 times c. And we end up with the exact same thing we had here. So really, you can use a mixture of things. Generally, the way I find that this works best is to do some substitution and then either do some more substitution with all of the things that you've got, picking a sensible value like 0, or doing some comparing of coefficients. Okay, All of these things work. They don't have to be seen as separate methods. They can be done together. So there is a question for you guys to have a go at here to find the values of the constants a, b, and c. I'm going to do this slowly on the board. And then we're just going to pick some questions from exercise 1e. And that's us nearly finished on this topic. There's only a tiny bit left after this. Okay. So the concept of this beginning bit, we can't write this fraction like this because the denominator wouldn't ever be x plus 1 squared because they already have a common denominator of x plus 1. So I can't write it in that way. The reason I can write it in this way <coughs> is because I have to have a mix of them. If I didn't have a mix of them, if I just had this one here, then I would never be able to have a 2x plus 1 on the numerator because b is just going to be a constant. So the maths works out that it ends up best having one of a, as a, as an x plus 1 and another one of an x plus 1 squared. You will probably get an idea of it working better by doing some of the practice questions because I think trying to understand this from scratch is kind of hard, but if you try it with some questions, it will start to make a bit more sense. Yeah. So there isn't cross-multiplication for this. It's about creating a common denominator. This is a bit more like a question on this side here. If I had uh, 1 third plus 5 ninths, you wouldn't do cross-multiplication for this, would you? What would you do? Yeah, so you would only change the first one, which is what's happening in this case here. For this one that's an x plus 1, I'm not going to multiply all of these things together. I'm only going to multiply this by x plus 1 and 2x plus 1, because it's already got one of the x plus 1s here. For the, the next one that's b, it's already got the x plus 1 squared, so it's only going to be multiplied by the 2x plus 1. And the c has already got the 2x plus 1, so it's going to be multiplied by the x plus 1 squared. So it's a bit more like this kind of fraction question than the other ones. What were you going to say, Said? The same thing. OK, I'll just come over in one sec, OK? I'm just going to finish, get this answer up for you, and then I'll come and check. <coughs> 